Ownership was always very important to me. If I wasn't in this business, I would be an architect, but I wanted to not only just design the house, but build the houses and own the houses and sell them. My father was a subcontractor and he would get paid uh, on Fridays and be so happy that he had made $800, but I would watch the man that owned the house sell it and make $80,000. So I always knew that there was more power in the man that owned the house rather than the man that actually was working on it and building it. So I always wanted to be the guy that owned the house. So naturally when I went into film and television, it had to be that way. Watching examples like Oprah owning the Oprah Winfrey show and, and understanding what that meant, that was very, very important to me. And I, and I think that um, I am a testament to anybody who wants to get into this business. Ownership changes everything. You know, when you think about film, and television, it's been done the same way for years. You know, you record an image and, and you put it out there. Well, just because it's been done that way for many, many years doesn't mean that there aren't a lot of other things you can add or change. So I just, I, I don't like to go with the norm or the status quo. I like to challenge the system and see what I can find differently. So that is truly a disruptor. So this is the residence. They have two kids, so. Very close, yeah. Their, their daughter's room. First time I came to um, Atlanta, I was um, coming here for Freaknik, which is the Black Spring Break. I was coming here to party and hang out with all the other college dropouts because I didn't even go. And, uh, but I saw black people doing well. I saw doctors and lawyers. I saw black families going to restaurants and living in nice houses. And that was so foreign to me coming from, uh, coming from Louisiana. So getting here, seeing that, being a part of that, tasting that and being in the air. And this was the 90s where there was this great migration to Atlanta, by, especially by black people, because they knew something special was happening here. Well, I was one of, one of the ones in that number, but it's also the home of Dr. Martin Luther King. And if you, if you really want to talk about somebody who had a dream, and all of his adversities and things that he overcame. I just felt like being on this ground, breathing this air in these Georgia pines would be everything I needed to become all that I wanted to be. I was driving the truck in the beginning. Okay. Yeah, I'm no stranger to hard work. That's the great thing about being in this in the in the entertainment business. There's not a job in this business that I don't know well. So having all these people work for me, I know what they're doing. I couldn't walk down the street without people screaming, Medea, Tyler, Medea, Medea. And then I got to Hollywood and they had no clue, no clue to what I what I'd done, who I was, or the following that I had. So I went to a couple of studios and, and they were like, well, we want to change this. We want to change that in your script. We want to change this and da 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 da. I'm like, mm -mm, no, not changing that. And I need to own it. And I was completely willing to walk away from it because I, I have an audience that has been so endearing to me, so uh, powerful and so strong and so my support, my rock by my side. They were supporting me so well, I didn't need to be in Hollywood. It was just a way to, for me to uh, tell more stories without having to show up at 360 different performances every year. But, but ownership for me was easy because I was underestimated. They said, sure, you can own it. They didn't think it was gonna be worth anything. Ah -ah. I, I feel like it was humble beginnings and I feel like it's humble, even more humbling for me now, even having all, all, all of this uh, access to things. It's, it's really, really great. But the, the important part of all of that is understanding what this is about, that it is beyond me. And it, it takes people to really walk the studio a lot and see the faces of all these people around here who haven't had a chance, who haven't had a shot, to see them get their opportunity, to see them light up when they see themselves on screen for the first time. That to me is, is, is the, the motivation, the inspiration, and everything I need to keep going. I've, I've been on many, many movie sets around uh, in, in my lifetime. And to walk in and not see one black face or very few women on the set, it's always been troubling to me. I thought, wow. There is not one black person that, that is working on this crew of 400. Even if you just did the statistics and the numbers, it, it should make sense that there would be at least one. So I wanted to foster an environment where minorities and women and LGBTQ, anybody who wanted to come and work and do a great job was welcome. 
what I found is that if you invest in the underdog, if you invest in the people who haven't had the opportunity, the level of gratitude and understanding for what is happening for them is so powerful. It's just wonderful.